So this is a tutorial for my new sewing pattern, the Tire Tank Pattern. It's a knit pattern that uses stretchy fabric and you can find this pattern on my website. I'll leave a link in the description box below. But you're going to want to cut out your size. The front and back of this pattern uses the exact same pattern piece. So you'll have a front and back and then two other pattern pieces. This is for the armband and this is for the neckband. So you wanna cut everything out and then we'll get into sewing the top. So this is the front top with the right side facing up and we're gonna place the back top on top of this with the right side facing down, which means both right sides will be facing together. We're going to align the shoulder seams and the side seams of the top and pin them in place. When sewing this top, you definitely want to use a stretch stitch. I'm going to be using my overlocker for this project, but you can definitely use a sewing machine and just use a standard zigzag stitch to sew this top. We're going to sew the shoulder seams and the side seams using a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. This is what my top looks like now that I've overlocked the edges. I have used black thread for this project, but you definitely want to use a thread that matches your fabric. I'm just using a really obvious color so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. But we're going to put this top to one side and focus on the neckband. So the neckband is a really long piece of fabric. And what we're going to do is with right sides together, we're going to fold the neckband in half and align the short edge. I'm going to take this to the overlocker and sew this with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I've just sewn the seam with the overlocker and as you can see when you open it up it becomes a circle. What we're going to do now is with wrong sides together we're going to fold the band in half and press this at the ironing board all the way along. So one edge will be completely sealed and the other will be raw. So this is what the neckband looks like now that I've pressed it in half. And as I said, one edge is folded and the other has the two raw edges. We're going to take the seam of the neckband and place that to one side like this. And on the opposite side, we're going to mark a notch with some scissors. Make sure you're marking the notch on the raw edge of the fabric, not the folded edge. This just means we have the center back and the center front marked on the neckband. Now, I also like to mark the quarter point of the neckband and how you do that is because you've already got the notched mark here and the seam here. We're going to fold this again in half and just mark two notches at this point. Now we have all four markings on the neckband. So I have my top placed in front of me and this is the right side of the fabric. As you can see, the shoulder seams and the side seams are joined. Because the front and back is the exact same pattern piece, decide which one you want to be your back. I'm just using this side. And make sure the right side of the fabric is facing out. We're going to take our neckband piece and align the center seam with the center back of the neckline. So I'm just gonna pin this in place for now. You wanna make sure you're pinning the raw edges to the raw neckline edge and the folded edge is facing outwards. Now on the opposite side, you should see a notch where we mark the center front. We're gonna align that to the center front of the top. I like to hold this in my hand and then bring the top down and pin that in place. So now we're going to align the quarter points to the shoulder seams. I'm gonna open out the top and making sure the neckband isn't twisted, 
we can see this is where that notch is. I'm going to align it to that shoulder seam. And then repeat the same on the other side. So if you stretch the top slightly, you'll be able to see if your neckband is twisted or not. And as you can see, nothing is twisted. It's all laying the right way. What we're going to do now is at each quarter point, we're just going to stretch the neckline slightly on the top and pin that all along to the neckband. So I've just pinned the neckband to the neckline. What we're going to do now is take this to the overlocker or your sewing machine, and we're going to sew this at the neckline using a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. So as you can see, the neckband is shorter than the neckline. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull the neckband and neckline to align them together as you're sewing it through the machine. So the back of the top is where we have the neckband seam. When I'm sewing this, I like to start maybe two or three inches away from that because it will mean it's less bulky as you're going through the overlocker. So this is what the neckband looks like now that I've sewn it to the neckline. So this is where the V of the neckline is. And when you're actually sewing the neckband to it, you want to gently pull that section and glide it through the machine as if it's a straight line. And when you do that, it will create a curve instead of the V neck. That's what we want at this stage. This is the front. And then the back looks like this. I'm going to press this flat slightly so it doesn't roll to the outside of the top. But if you find your neckband keeps coming out, you can definitely make sure you push that to the right side and then top stitch all along the neckline to help it stay in place. It really depends on what type of fabric you're using. And I always find that with this fabric, it doesn't really do that. So I'm going to skip the top stitching step. So I've just pressed this roughly in place. What we're going to do now is sew the front V on the neckline. So now it's time to sew the V neckline of the front top. And I've already placed a pin in the center. How you determine this is you basically fold the top in half and you find the center point and you place a pin there. This doesn't have to be super, super accurate. You can also fold it the other way if it's easier for you to visualize, but you just want to place a pin at the center. Then we're going to turn the top inside out. And right where that center point is, I'm going to fold that section, take the pin out and just roughly place it where that mark was. So this is where the mark was for the center point. And I've just placed the pin diagonally this way. Now it's up to you how much of a distance you want the gap to be from the center fold to where you're going to sew a stitching line. I like to keep a really small half a centimeter gap in this section and then literally follow along and sew diagonally all the way to the bottom. But we're going to stop right where the first stitch is for the neckband. So we don't want to sew past this neckband where the stitching is. We want to stop right before it. So you're essentially just sewing here, which is 0.5 centimeters inwards 
and you're going to taper the stitching line all the way down and stop just before where that stitching line begins for the neckband. So this is one side and this is what the other side looks like. So it should be a folded edge and this is the center front. I'm going to sew this at the sewing machine and show you what I mean. If you want to make sure you're happy with it roughly, you can open it up and see roughly what it will look like. Obviously, it's a bit jagged because we've put the pin in. But let me show you how I do this at the sewing machine. So you want to do this step on the sewing machine, not the overlocker, because we need a needle to go through really exactly. So this is what the V neckline looks like now that I've sewn it. As you can see, we have literally stopped right before the edge where the overlocker line starts. And if you open that up, it will look like this. And what you want to do is just use your thumb to press it in place. Cut any loose threads. I still have a few tiny little threads poking out there. And that is the V neckline completed for the front top. So this is what the top should look like now from the right side on the front top. And then the back top we actually leave just as it is. We don't sew the V neckline at the back. It's only at the front top. And the neckline is looking really, really nice. So to sew the armbands, you have two pieces and the exact same process as the neckband. We're gonna fold it in half with right sides together and align the short seam. I'm going to sew this at the overlocker using a one centimeter of the rate of an inch seam allowance. Just sewing both seams with the overlocker and what we're going to do is do the exact same process and at the ironing board fold this with wrong sides together and press along the entire armbands. So I have both armbands pressed like we did for the neckband and what I'm going to do is take the seam and align that to one side and again on the other side I'm going to mark a notch on the raw edge. For the armband we only actually are marking one notch, we're not marking it in quarters. So now we're ready to pin this to the armholes. So I have my top out in front of me and this is the right side facing out. We're gonna take the underarm and open it up like this. And we're gonna align the neckband seam with the underarm seam. We wanna make sure that right sides are facing and both raw edges are facing. Then without twisting the neckband, we're gonna align the opposite end with the shoulder seam. So as you can see, the neckband is pinned at those two points. What we're going to do now is stretch the rest of the neckband and pin it to the armhole. So I've pinned one armband. We're going to do it the same to the other one. Now I'm going to send the armbands to the armhole at the overlocker. And I'm going to use a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Remember to stretch the armband to fit the armhole as you're putting it through the machine. So this is what the armholes look like now that I've sewn on the armbands. And again, you want to press this and then it's optional if you want to sew top stitching all along. Again, it really depends on what fabric you use and if it keeps rolling out to the wrong side, if it kept doing something like that, then you want to want to top stitch it. But if it naturally rolls like that, it's not really necessary to top stitch the neckline or armholes. 
But all that's left to do now is hem the bottom of the top. And I honestly just love to hem stretch fabric by doing a double folded hem. And what you basically do is you fold down the edge by one centimeter and again by one centimeter towards the wrong side of the fabric. And we're gonna sew that along the entire edge of the hem. Now, because this top is loose fitting at the hem, I'm actually gonna sew this stitch on my sewing machine. So I'm gonna use a standard stitch, not a stretch stitch. And that's because the seams aren't gonna pop when we wear this because it is loose fitting at the waist. So you can either use a straight stitch on your sewing machine or you can use a twin needle if you prefer that look. So this is what the hem of the top looks like now that I've sewn that in place. You definitely want to use a thread colour that matches your fabric, but this is the closest one I could find in my stash. And that is the entire top completed. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I sew the Tyra Tank pattern. It really is a nice, quick and easy make, and it's such a staple piece in my wardrobe. You can find the pattern on my website, which I've linked down in the description box below. I hope you enjoy making this pattern as much as I do. I'll see you in the next one.